Hello there, welcome. Today we're playing against Azalea, the current, you could say, S tier um, meta deck. And we're playing ag against it with KO, who is also a very good meta contender right now. And he does have a hard matchup into Azalea, but I'm gonna point out some some big plays you can do into her that will, will actually make this game quite a bit favored in most situations. Now, as per usual, if you wanna, if you're starting with KO and you can set up an agility that's already really good, and then whenever there's this this opportunity to put a lot of damage against her, um, and she's only threatening vanilla damage with no, like, game altering on it, meaning no red in the ledger or something similar that disrupts your play you're actually very happy to to just take those to threaten a lot of damage i did decide to block out that endless arrow here because if that was to hit it goes back into her hand and then into her arsenal so it basically presents another full card so those um four blocks from my equipment also gave me another three value on denying that arsenal and azalea also works in a way where every card more that she's able to play she'll get um an extra value out of that so in theory that's not only three value we get out of blocking that endless arrow it's probably even more and now we get to play the blood rush with an agility token and the runner runner which will renew that agility token for the next turn that is already pretty huge and after that we can come in with a claw for five which is 14 damage already and then another beast within for eight so that's a 22 damage turn if you can get Azalea low enough that she's forced to block her hands, as I said, become much weaker. Because if she can't play all five five cards, um, she's definitely definitely not as her strongest. So now even though we didn't get to go second, we have the tempo back, we have the life lead. And we can come in with another full four card hand. Disrupting the arsenal even. And that's exactly what you want to do against Azalea. You want to use those sand packings and those command and conquers. Ideally even with the might token on top of them. To always deny Azalea that arsenal. Get her to play a weaker hand than, than ideal. And now I actually decide against getting um, that beast within here. I'd rather have an arsenal and discard the mighty wind up. In retrospect, the Beast Within might just be too clunky to put into Arsenal, but there's a caveat here as it is quite a good card to have in, in your Arsenal when you're playing against Azalea. Because she has, has those um, Arsenal Destroy effects and those trigger the Beast Within effect actually. So they will renew your Arsenal instead of just leaving you with a blank there. It is quite risky though and I'd, I'd probably evaluate this as a misplay. Now we do get the sand picking here, which is huge. It will come in with quite a few mites and just disrupt the arsenal again, push some damage. Get her from playing a, a strong hand again. That Doril shot has a quite relevant on it, you could say. It presents two more damage from the blood rot and the one um, armor shred. So blocking this out is also quite valuable. Unfortunately, we are not really able to do so um, when we want to, if we want to send the sand packing afterwards. So we'll just take out as much damage as possible here and keep our armor around for a later round. I was thinking about putting the Apex Prompt Breaker here um, too, just to get that extra might to make the sand packing even harder to block. But 8 should already be sufficient enough. Because we have to remember Azalea doesn't run many 3 blocks anyways. So she'll probably just have to take this and go even lower, play off a four card hand again.
And it's just textbook. We get another sand packing with the blue here. So we can just block with two reds and the apex bone breaker. Get that sand packing to a annoying breakpoint and send it in again. Azalea plays a knock the death whistle though, which will mean she'll get to dominate a an arrow of her choice now. Um, so unfortunately we won't be able to get a the sec that second red out of her hand. And now having that arsenal free would have been huge. Also fatigue shot will make that sand packing way smaller. Um, in blocking with clash of might we might get a might token here though. So it probably still comes in for, for 5 after the getting 2 mites here. And we're probably just going to keep that swing big around. If we don't draw a CNC or sand pegging next turn, we can still come in with um, what I believe should be 8. And I can see Azalea dropping way lower this turn. And then threatening 8 damage will make her block probably. And as you can see, our life total is still way up, which is exact, um, exactly what we're playing for. And the reason for that are those the arsenal disruption effects we're putting on the table. Because the arrows she was able to send really weren't that huge. I, I think she hit us with an 8 here. And again, forced to block with two cards, making her hand smaller again. Very nice, very flexible hand we have here. We can send that swing big and this card edge I wind up, still block with the Clash of Might. Even get a Might token if we're lucky. And situations like those, obviously scap skin letters become uh, quite interesting, let's say, to, to, to roll for those, but it's always a risk and i think in a situation like this that's not a um, risk you're uh, you have to take because you still get a really good value out of blocking with those cards and you're not forced to actually convert them into anything aggressive like right here we could just block with the clash of might and as i said later on this card that agile wind up still convert a full hand and now <laughs> Funnily enough, this, this beast with an arsenal a thing will come up where we're getting hit by Seek and Destroy and that will destroy our beast with an end the end of the turn and we'll be able to just get a new arsenal card out of it. Swing big this, this insane one card play Brute is able to do, which is another one of those uh, key cards against Azalea where Red in the Ledger doesn't come, become relevant at all. And already. She's at 9 HP, we're threatening 9, she'll be forced to block. And because of the future turn where we made her only play a 3 card hand, she doesn't even have an arsenal now. It's all rippling down from our earlier place, which is really nice. We also have the tempo, we have the life lead, it's all going in our favor. Now, again, that's not the best arsenal target, but we're close to finishing this game here. Um, and it can still be a 2 card 5. But yeah, maybe maybe it's actually not, not nothing you should do right there. Uh, but I, I, I find it hard to evaluate that. Okay, now ideally, we get to play a sandbagging into swing big. I'm using our tunic counter here. But if we're being, uh, if it's if it's going unfortunate for us, yeah, damn, she could just have the disruption effect there, um, which will leave us, I believe, with a uh, something like swing big into claw, which is already quite nice as well. Um, now we get to keep four cards and use our armor if they have a rain razor in hand. So be it. That can can just happen here. Um, I'm fine with not using the flashback ability against Azalea. Unfortunately, there's this rain raises. But still, again, a swing big. 4-9. We're 
which will make a block. And yeah, the life total kind of got closer now, but <laughs> again, I'm not really worried um, at this moment right here because as long as Azalea has to block, she's not threatening much and we should be able to play this game down very controlled. Also, um, if Azalea drops down to one, or even two, regular swing becomes an option for us. Um, so she's actually not even allowed to take any damage here, if we're being uh, completely honest. Yep, so Azalea instead decides on just giving the full block here. Probably passing over with just arsenaling, uh, which again would make our send packing pretty relevant. Mm, instead, they do find the Codex of Frailty, so they will be able to actually send an arrow here and get an arsenal even after that. Um, that's just an outlet for our no fear, though. Just get some value out of that. And after that, we don't have an action point. And then again, rolling scapskins could make us convert our full hand. If we don't get a second action point, we will have a card left in hand, which we can't arsenal. Um, but again, I'm saying it is to not worth taking that risk here, because even with keeping that one card in hand, we're still up in the race. And that Scapskins could is basically the only way we can for sure lose this game now if we ro roll a one on that and get, just give her that five card hand. So we rather just don't take a risk at all. Play the Nofia out again. Not the Nofia, I'm sorry. Send, send Packing out again. And force her to block. I'm choosing to pitch both cards here because otherwise we would still have the beast within in hand and it's not the, the best card in a scenario like this. It's pretty, it's not pretty flexible. Um, in an ideal scenario for her, she has two arrows in hand, so three blocks, which she can block that out with. Then she gets to keep a three card hand. Now this hand isn't too great. Again, if we were to roll scab skins, we could make quite a bit more out of it. Um, I'd still say what I said before, it's not worth the risk. We'd rather just send that one bear fangs for eight um, and wait for a better hand because we will threaten her um, enough so that she doesn't get to keep enough, enough of her hand. Okay, coming in with the dominated one here. That's okay. We'll just leak three damage, no on it, and send back that pair things. Now not even an arsenal for Azalea. And we will demand, let's see, at least three cards. Uh, two cards. Uh, she should rather put three in here, though, because if she only puts two, she's definitely in reckless swing range. And then it is about time for us to once again draw a go again source of any kind. Maybe a regular um a blood rush bellow would be nice. And if we get a blood rush bellow on a five card hand, there's no way she survives a turn. 
And that's just the closing power we can wait on. Nice, and that's exactly what happens. Now you need to be careful about that cast bones. Um, it doesn't mean you have to roll scab skins. You can just pitch the cast bones for the blood rush and you'll still have more than enough resources and cards to play out whatever, whatever you get back. Nice, we even get another blue. So it's just mandible claw. And then it doesn't really matter. Um, I probably still want to discard it. Agile wind Windup. Um, the, the 8 we can send here with the Agile Windup from hand might just be enough to kill her, but um, just to play it safe and even, even now, we'll, we'll just send a 7 here, discard that Agile Windup, even if she survives this, she'll be dead next turn. Yeah, and that Agile Windup from hand would have killed her with that one more damage. Oh, actually not, because she could have put the Skullbone cross rip in. So playing it safe pays off. Now we get to convert our whole, whole hand again present another uh, let's see 12 damage and yeah usually azalea doesn't doesn't uh, um, doesn't block 12 even with that one armor right needs to commit three cards here and then five is the nail in the coffin last one okay and it's ggs so yeah, KO, uh, definitely a <laughs> good deck right now. Um, Azalea just won a calling and KO is able to to threaten her game plan quite a bit, which makes him a nice pick um, amongst a whole lot of other reasons. If you want to see other matchups, I'm playing more KO at the moment. Just subscribe and I'll see you there.